the parts of me that I exercise through Roy Kent. Listen, unfortunately, I think there's quite a lot I relate to in him. <laughs> I think I think I, I have a lot of anger. It's awesome to realize that you get paid to curse in this show. And I love to think about that. But <laughs> I also want to highlight that you are a brilliant, and I said that in capital letters, you're a brilliant writer. Oh, um, thank you. I want to ask you about how the show has evolved because football is a background, but beneath all the subjects that you have talked about in the show, we have mental health. And I want to say thank you for that. You said in some interviews a very important word behind all the creative decisions in the show, and it's intentionality yeah. how do you find all like do, do you create or find intentionality behind that well I think it, it it's about it's sort of as much about what you put in as about what you don't put in because particularly when you're making a comedy if you're surrounded with amazing people like we are and they're all funny like it can be funny 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 it's easy the funny bit's easy so it's it's where you draw the line of like What does this mean though? Why is this happening? And as long as there's like an emotional through line and what's going on matters, then everything else is fine, I think. You have won several Emmys now and it's it's amazing how it sounds Emmy winner, Brett Goldstein yeah. nowadays, right? I know the story that at the beginning you were a writer, you were not going to play Roy Kent. Yes. And you decided that after, I think, five episodes of writing. Now that you think about that and you realize that Roy Kent and you are like yeah. so tight, how do you yeah. feel? It's a really magical thing because whenever I think back on it, pe people ask me like, oh, that must have been a brave thing to do or whatever. But it really was like, it didn't feel like a choice. I was like, I, I, I feel this very strongly that I, that I should be Roy Kent. <laughs> like it felt, it was a very <laughs> overwhelming, like, I just have to go for this because it feels like it's what it should be, you know? Yeah. And it is, in hindsight, I go, bloody hell, that's amazing. Amazing it worked out. I have here like a calendar of Ted Lasso. Yeah, I'm looking at that, it looks great. <laughs> What's uh, March? March is Sam Tohib. Uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. We have all these motivational quotes that come from Ted Lasso that you can read them and feel motivated about them. But behind those phrases... There's a team of writers and you're mm. one of them. So I want to ask you about how do you think about positivism and or optimism and mm. then just put it on some words and then the audience gets them and you make us happy. It's It sounds so easy, but it's not that, I guess. Well, I think that, that part of it is something Jason talks about a lot. I think it was Quincy Jones talking about making an album and he said... Something like you have to do 95% of the work. You have to do all the homework, be ready, but then you have to leave 5% for God to come in, for magic to happen. And okay. I think that's true even in, in the way it's written is that it's all there. There's like a gap left for the audience to fill in. So I, I hope that's why an audience takes these things and makes meaning in them because we've left a little bit for you to go, you take this, you, you feel it. Okay. My last question for you is about catharsis. When you're a writer and, and when you're an actor uh, or director or whatever, you give to your characters something about yourself. And in that way, you're talking about yourself. Talking about Roy Kent and you being a writer, what mm. can you tell me about that? The parts of me that I exercise through Roy Kent. Uh, listen, unfortunately, I think there's quite a lot I relate to in him. I think, <laughs> I, think I, I have a lot of anger but I, I've been able to express that through Roy, so that's good. I think, uh, sadly, I relate to the finding it difficult to be vulnerable and thinking that that's a, a, a struggle. Uh, but as with Roy, and as with any time I have done that, it's always been worked out great. But for some reason, culture, upbringing, everything, you, you, it's, it's a difficult thing to let go of this image of masculinity that you're supposed to just be tough, you know? Brett, thank you so much for giving us Ted Lasso. I know it's not you only, no, but the, me, but your team, the team. You. And also of uh, shrinking because uh, having those shows, it's we as an audience feel just gratitude. Don't, don't stop ever. <laughs> oh, Diana, that's very kind. Thank you very much. I have a Ted Lasso calendar and it happens to be that you are 
here this month. Oh, this month. wow. It's you. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> How do you feel about being a synonym of wisdom, of gratitude? Um, I feel I feel incredibly privileged, you know. It's a great feeling, especially when you run into people like you just now and you, and you know our show because of our show we have such a really incredible positive impact on people's lives and and people you know take that very seriously and they and they hold it very dearly and so we have to do the same thing i think it's great it's an insane insane feeling to be you know so closely linked to people and their relationships with their family members who they watch the show with and stuff it's it's great like yeah I, i can't really put words to it you know it's, it's an incredible incredible feeling it is a lot of pressure though because i am not as wise as sam i'm not as <laughs> you know what i mean like so for or or um optimistic as sam sometimes but i am trying and we will we will get there eventually Your character has gone through a lot of transitions yeah. because you are a football player of course but talking about mental health talking about relationships with like Sam and Rebecca and talking about the friendships of all football players like Cristo Cristo yeah. Azani is just joy pure joy yeah, I want yeah, to yeah. ask you about that because as I said you've had this transition with your character but you're still learning of him Oh yeah, 100%. You know, Sam's a young man and he's he's growing into into manhood, into adulthood and he's figuring out what that looks like and how he wants to how he wants to navigate through that, you know. Um again, like I'm just really proud and honored to have been able to tell this story and to be able to play this character because these are really rich conversations that I, I get to have through Sam. Um, you know, what does masculinity look like? What does, um, you know, love look like? What does, what does, like how, how like to dare to give yourself to another person in a relationship? Like these are all really rich and interesting nuanced questions to have. Um, and you're right, like him being a footballer kind of falls to the back a little and we get to see a three-dimensional person which we don't usually get to do with with athletes on television so um, I'm right. just really glad that I, I get to I get to be a part of it and I get to tell the story and play an incredible character in Sam. Because this is a show that has football on it and because we just leave the World Cup I do have to ask you about Messi and <laughs> how he's the champion of the world Mm. Did you celebrate that? What did you think about that? 100%, man. Like it's it's just <laughs> Wow. Wow, I thought those sold out. They're actually really hard to get yeah. Messi shirts right now. But um um I think yeah, when you we've I've been following the Messi story my whole life. Like he's one of the greatest players ever and I'm just so lucky that I get to like, I was born in, in you know, the generation where we got to watch him play and and um to to be you know in that moment watching him win that world cup and kind of solidifying his career the final missing piece it was great for football it was great for argentina it was great for south america it was great for the sport um and yeah it just made you believe that like if you're if you're a little kid and you have a dream and you devote yourself to it then yeah like that fairy tale ending can come for you and and i i feel like yeah i'm not i'm probably not the only person who felt that way watching him win that world cup it was well deserved it was an incredible game probably the best football match i've ever watched the final yeah. um and and yeah i just yeah i'm really lucky that I'm, i was alive to see it you know you are amazing tahib thank you so much for your time so nice to meet oh, you thank you so much for yours it was lovely speaking with you have a lovely day bye 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 you too I love you guys. We're